Uh, good evening. Uh, today, uh, 2 2020 the board is meeting to discuss some of the issues about the ASCA Nationals, including uh, the rotation system, the sites, uh, requirements, and, and wish lists from each one of the programs. And so uh, it'll be just like any other board meeting. We'll go down the list in the agenda. And then we'll just go ahead and uh, go around and let all directors have a say. And if there's a motion, we'll discuss and then vote accordingly. So um, I guess um, the way that the agenda is written, Colorado is not there. But I, I guess the, the first thing that we need to, to discuss regarding the sites is whether what we're going to do about 2022 uh, we need to sign the contract pretty soon um laura sent me an email um just a little bit ago and she thinks that we will have enough time to uh, negotiate a contract with any of the sites that we have used in the rotation um as you know 2022 according to our rotation will will be uh, Colorado. So I'm just going to go around and I'm going to, um, I guess you can, you can say what you think about it. Uh, Rick? That was, a, that was a quick one, Liz. I wasn't ready. Sorry, uh, Rick. I promised them that I would start from the, from the bottom. I know. <laughs> I know how, I know how Denise feels now. <laughs> you. My my concern, or it's not a concern. I know the uh, survey went around, and I believe the country is in the majority to keep a rotation. Uh, just to be honest, I'm a little bit hesitant with that. Uh, I think that we have a couple of sites that would work well for the ASCA Nationals as far as the availability of stock, the availability of sites to handle our Nationals. Uh, I will be up front and said I voted for a rotation with Colorado and Texas only just because we do not seem to have the issues that some of the other venues are having. Uh, price is a big factor and some of these other facilities maybe over in the east coast or other areas i do believe there are areas that can handle us but honestly we just can't afford them so we need to stick in my opinion with what works uh, my opinion was colorado and texas let's just go back and forth between them two uh, if need be, I would sure go with majority if everybody wanted to keep it with California, with Bakersfield, Colorado, and Texas. Uh, I just think it's in ASCA's best interest, especially since ASCA is starting to take over nationals starting next year. And that's all I got for right now, Liz. Thanks, Rick. Rachel? Um. You know, even though we sent out the survey, that survey is a tool. Uh, that is a tool that's to be employed by the ASCA board to ensure that we make the best fiduciary decisions for ASCA. And because ASCA is moving to host the nationals, I think it, we're at a critical juncture in time when we have to look at, at the most cost efficient sites, our ability to have economies of scales at those sites by relying on local hotels, motels, restaurants, and vendors and or other um, resources that could give us cost savings near those sites. So while I do appreciate everyone liking to move around, the reinvention of the wheel is is not in ASCA's best interest. 
And we see it time after time because people think they understand what it takes to host nationals. And the majority of people, unfortunately, do not, down to the very small details. As Rick mentioned, the ability to have 160 head of cattle, sheep, and ducks is huge. And so therefore, we cannot go to some sites that may be beautiful for the other venues, but yet not be able to accommodate the stock. So at this point, I really am in favor of not totally limiting it to one site, but I think eventually that that's what we're going to need to do. And that site, wherever that site is, I believe that the venues deserve to be indoors, all venues. To think that we have to allow the agility dogs and to run out in the rain on equipment and possibly even snow and, and the other elements, I, I, I just think that that is, not, that is not in the best interest of the people that train all year for this event. So uh, right now, uh, I, I really do not want to sign the Colorado contract. I would like to investigate other sites that may be applicable out in that area. So while I'm for a West Coast site and an East Coast site, I mean a middle of the country site, I'm not for Far East nor Far West. I could go with something similar to Colorado and Bryan, Texas. So right now, that would be my choice, is a site similar to Colorado, somewhere in that area, and Bryan, Texas. Thank you. Thanks, Rachel. Um, Judy, are you here? Uh, Judy doesn't seem to be here yet. So we're going to go ahead with Jean. Yeah. Um, I believe that we probably should sign the contract with Colorado. Uh, the reason for that is I, I, I'm not sure that we would have enough time to try to find a different location for 2022, even though that sounds like it's a long ways away. It's not, especially, uh, when you start doing the research. I mean, but of course, if if we wanted to postpone it, that that's fine too. Um, I am with Rachel in that um, I don't. I think for ASCA um, to be able to have a premier event uh, where we're not reinventing the wheel every single time, where we can control costs and expenses and get sponsorships and city money. We ask our needs to um, tie ourselves to one, maybe two locations. Neither one would be on the coast. Uh, you know, as, as as much as Brian is a wonderful facility, it's pretty far south for a lot of people. Um, but nonetheless, I I could be happy. I, I mean, I think ASCA could make a good decision by going between Colorado and Texas. Um, but as it stands right now, I I think we should sign the contract with Colorado because the decisions we're going to make are hopefully going to be decisions that carry us into the future. And so if we go to Greeley one more time or or again after this, but this will give us time to do proper research and really uh, make decisions properly. Thank you. Thanks, Jean. Jen? Um, I want to appreciate everybody that took time to take the survey and give us feedback that we can get views from the membership. Um, I was one of those that researched Karina, and there was a lot of comments about that on the survey. And it's a nice facility for specialty clubs, but would take a lot to make it a large enough facility to handle all of the ASCA events going on every day. 
Um, all the comments everybody has made, uh, I agree with. I think central part of the country, uh, we need to really begin to consider uh, the amount of care that needs to be taken with ducks, sheep, and cattle, getting them prepared, having them there, um, having all those things done is a daunting task that if the facility isn't set up for it, it becomes even a bigger expense and more challenging. Um, and making sure all that livestock stays safe in that period of time. So my personal belief was Bryant, Texas, under one roof, uh, a community that wants to work with us and that facility, but it's a long way south. It's a long way for me. It's a big drive. Um, Colorado has been good on years that it didn't flood, but the year that it was wet, it was not fun for any venue. Um, and the distance between venues is uh, makes it that you need to have golf carts and ways to get between there. Um, I don't believe that we can find um, a facility in this short a time um, that could be, uh, I, we could begin to look for a facility. Um, so I would agree to do Greeley. Part of it was a 10 year plan to see how this rotation would work. Um, and so to continue it at least a few more years so we get a feel for what it's about. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Gina? Hi. Um, I pretty much agree with everyone what you've been saying. I originally had just wanted one location, and that was Brian because they seem to have everything and the business office is there. However, it's a huge problem for people coming from Canada and northern Montana that time of year. It just doesn't work. Um, so I would like to actually see it go between Greeley and, and Brian or another facility other than Greeley, but like in that particular area or part of the country. Um, one of the things that some of the people had told me that they loved about Greeley and they didn't like about Brian was that Brian, there was no place to really turn your dogs loose and let them run on a grassy area where uh, Greeley does have that. Um, it's just something to think about. So basically, I would like to see it go between just two locations. And I think doing that, we can ask up, can put on a premier nationals. That's it. Thank you. Denise? Um, I, too, would like to thank all of the people who sent in comments on the on the national locations um i don't think it's anything different than you know we all already know that we everybody wants a beautiful site and a under one roof and a you know central location so that it's not more than a couple hour drive for everybody you know in a perfect world that was how it would be but um i also think that uh at this point you know i um the Bryan facility is the primo under the under the roof. The arenas are great. You know, this, the area for all of the different programs is, is good. Um, I, I don't think the RV parking is, is anything out, you know, great. And the lack of space for to just get away and let your dogs go and be in a grassy area. Um, as long as you have transportation, I'm sure there are places you can take them to off site. But that, that was something that also bothered me, I would say. Um, I don't know about the, pro the profit loss um, scale for Brian. They're, I'm sure they're more expensive than, than some of the other facilities. I too like Colorado as long as the weather's good. Um, 
the the open space is great, but the distance between the venues is is quite large. And but in the rotation, I think it's it works. It's a little bit more central centrally located. Um, as far as signing a contract with them, if Laura has been in touch with them and and feels that they will wait, hold off, and let us you know give us a little bit more time, I think we should take that time if if we think that there's been a place that's been um, brought to our attention that's a little bit more uh, northern eastern maybe as a sense more central location. Um, there were a lot of good comments from people. The thing that that people don't realize is they're probably, and this is maybe short-sighted of me, but I'll bet there are not 30 people in this membership that really know every step that it takes to put on a national. And it is a huge, huge undertaking. And there are things that people never even think about unless they've done it. And so, um, you know, when you talk about, well, you know, the grass is dry. Well, you know, for example, um, that was there were several comments, of course, that I recognized from Bakersfield, and one of them was that the grass was dry. And what they don't realize is in California, there's a moratorium on watering at that point. It hadn't been up until this year, but that was the cause of that. But people don't realize that. There are a lot of things that go on behind the scenes that people don't realize. Uh, but anyway, um, I think that the original rotation was for to include um, Bakersfield one more time in 23, um, and I would be for that. And one of the biggest reasons is that um, it the profit from that facility is good. They're very good to work with us. We have never gone out and solicited money from the community. However, I know that it's there. Um, um, you know, upgraded hotels certainly can be um, found and and hotel, uh, hotel rates may be negotiated more. Um, the livestock <clears throat> this year, there are more compliments this year from that national than any other year that we've put it on. This is our fourth time. Um, everybody liked the livestock. Um, they said the, you know, the, the grounds were good, the amount of food on grounds, uh, variety, those sort of things um, were good. There were a lot of negative things about, that we can't control you know, air quality and and uh, the part of town it's in, et cetera. But as far as nationals, for ASCA, there's a huge population on that end of the end of the country also. But um, if everybody thinks that two locations centrally located is, is the only way to go, I can understand that and I would go for that and I'd support it. But I think that we do need to look for something a little bit more um, covered if we can find something than Greeley. I don't know if they can have it a little bit earlier in the year than, than, than when they have it, but anyway, that's what I have to say. Thank you. Thanks. Um, Judy, are you here? <clears throat> okay, we're still missing Judy, so, okay, so, um, I, I I also want to thank uh, the membership for responding. We had uh, more than um, 2,200 um, responses to the survey, which is pretty good. Um, so uh, it, it was interesting. I, 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 I must admit that I was surprised with the results. Uh, but um, in terms of uh, the rotation, I'm inclined to say, you know, two sides or something like that, but um, I still think, you know, Texas is, is for the requirements of ASCA nationals, Texas is probably the one that checks every box and um, including the livestock. Uh, Colorado is good, but you know, like agility, for example, we've had some comments about agility being upside and sometimes, you know, having to deal with the weather. And that can be a safety issue. Um, so I, I don't know. Um, I think for 2022, if we decide not to 
negotiate the contract yet we really need to move on having to you know finding another alternative for 2022 um the other the other thing that concerns me is that although i love both colorado and texas they're still quite far away from everybody up north so um I don't know what we can do about that. I know that that there are just some places where we just can't get the stock. And um, I know that we have two two sites that um, were sent to us by uh, members, and we'll discuss them in a little bit. Um, but I think that what everybody has said about the requirements for ASCA nationals, I don't think I think that is true that most members don't understand what those requirements are uh and purina i saw you know when i was looking at all those comments is like purina 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 and it's like we've we've looked at purina it just won't work for asca it works for other for other uh, groups but it, it just doesn't work for asca it's just not big enough um, so we will have to find something else. I don't know if there is something else like in the middle somewhere around, I don't know, uh, some, somewhere else in Missouri or somewhere else near Kansas or Kentucky or I don't know. But um, those are my concerns. I mean, I, I'm, I'm not providing any solutions, but, but I, I do have concerns. So I, I guess we need to, kind of like make a decision regarding 2022 whether we want to wait a little bit um and then research but then somebody is going to have to spearhead the research on another facility because we can't we can't just wait a long time we're, we're already almost march and um negotiating with a facility may take a little long so so that's that's what I got. So I guess I'm not sure most most of you um, said that we could wait on Colorado. Or there were a couple of you who said that that we could wait, and then some that were concerned about the timing. So I guess I'm gonna kind of call off. How many of you believe that we should? wait maybe a couple of months and try to find another facility nobody how many are you gonna go around liz well i was trying to get an idea of where we are at before i go around again liz, hey, liz, liz, liz. Rick. rick go hey, ahead I'll Great. start it. Uh, I'm okay with waiting a couple of months. I don't think that's going to hurt us. Uh, mm -hmm. If Laura thinks she's done most of the research on this, uh, I'm not sure we'll find anything better in a couple of months, but I'm okay with trying. And then if not, go ahead and sign the contract with Greeley. Okay. Rachel? Um, I agree 100% with Rick. Okay. Judy, are you here? Jean? Yes, I'm here. Oh, I'm sorry, Judy. I, we're talking about uh, what to do with Colorado for 2022. Do you think we should wait a couple of months and try to find an alternative, or should we go ahead with Colorado? No, uh, I would like to find an alternative. OK. Jean? I agree with Rick. All right, Jan. I agree with Rick. Okay, Gina. Yeah, I agree with everyone. Just hold off for a couple months. Okay, Denise. I agree. I would say maybe a maximum of three months. Okay. All right. So I guess we are waiting. So I. I think that we need somebody to kind of like be in charge of of researching and I I don't know if we're going to have uh, does anybody volunteer 
Do we have site suggestions? No, well, the person this, doing... uh, ahead, this, is, this is Rachel. I'll volunteer since um, I'm retired and I actually did the huge site survey last time of 28 sites. So I'll volunteer if I can find a helper to help me out with this. I'll help you. I'll help you. Okay. Cool. So we have two helpers then, three of us? Yeah, you do. Can I ask you something, Rachel? This is Denise. Yes, ma'am. When you were doing those 28 other sites, were those sites that you found or were those sites that people suggested that you look at? How did you come upon those 28 sites? When we did the survey back ever how many years ago it was now, I, I was working uh, down at Divots. Oh, my God, that's probably been three years ago now. We did a survey to, and asked people to provide sites to us. They sent in a ton of sites. We then took those sites and pared them down by looking at them online to determine if they would even, you know, begin to fit our needs. And then we, I actually emailed the sites and called the sites, each one of them. The majority of the sites was just a clear no because of the cost and because they did not, because of yearly fairs and festivals and whatever, they did not have anywhere near the time frame to provide to us. And so that was 28 sites that I looked at. There were very few of those sites that were able to host us during the time frame when we wanted to have it. So there was a myriad of issues related to each site. And so I, I am open for suggestions, literally, regarding sites. We did look at the big site in Tulsa where they have the big quarter horse show. It is way out of our budget. And that was the issue with a lot of the sites, especially up the northeast coast. They were so far out of our budget that even if they had stock, even if they could take care of the other requirements, we couldn't have afforded them. So we have to look at budget. We have to look at requirements. We have to look to determine if they're suitable. And as Jan said, um, I also uh, went to Purina and toured the site, uh, reviewed it, and it is central in the middle of the country, but it will not work for ASCA because of confirmation, rally, obedience, and agility. A lot of those would have to be outside, and that's just unacceptable the way that we run our nationals and our finals. And so what, what people, as in each one of you guys has said this, what people do not understand are the small things like that. So that's what we will have to look at for these sites. So we may want to send out a quick uh, request on ASC members and put it on the website. If anyone has sites that are in the central part of the country, please send them to us, and that would at least help us out a little bit. Did I answer your question? Oh, yeah, you did. That was great. So there was a site in uh, another site in Georgia um that was no ma'am several right nope i went That's there Perry. Actually, yes. right Perry, I right. Went there. right perry georgia where they have the georgia national fairgrounds i went there it is a gorgeous site they have everything that we need but they do not have neither time nor the budget that we could afford but the main thing was they're booked they're so booked up they had no time for us well, I think that that's what happens an awful lot, and, and people on the outside just do not realize how much work has already gone into finding facilities. And so when you find a facility that has arenas and buildings and RV parking and enough electrical, et cetera, and food, it, all these things that, um, you know, if, if it works well for them, they think it's a great site. But what they didn't see was maybe it didn't work well for four other programs. So, so that's a, it is a huge thing. It's, it's just interesting how um, these sites pop up that are perfect. And then when you and, get to really right, look at again, them. Oh. I believe we go too far from the middle of the country. We're not being fair to the majority of the membership. And, and it, I consider Georgia East Coast. So, so by rights, uh, you know, 
it, we should not be on east or west coast. We should try our best to stay in the middle of the country. Now, if it were left to me, I will tell you up front, outright, Texas would be my only location I would ever choose due to the fact that they have everything that we need and it's all undercover. But, and you know, when when we look at the results of the rotation, continue with it, that was 31%. Modify it was 29.8%. That's less than a 2% difference and modify to continue. And then if you look at the next statistic, a quarter of the people that answered had no opinion. So so that shows right there that it is pretty divided actually about, about whether to continue or whether to be stationary in one site. But uh, that is how we did it. So I'm open to suggestions if anyone has any regarding what sites uh, and how we may obtain those sites to look at. Um, I Great, think, I'll be uh, yeah, go ahead. No, nothing. I just said I'll be glad to help. Okay. Uh, I think that what we should do is when we um, send a call out to the membership uh, to suggest more sites, I think that we should also include in that call the the requirements. Um, Tala has a, a very nice list um, that she put together from from what we had previously, I think what Rachel had previously done. Um, and I think that needs to be included when we write to the membership and ask for suggestions. That way they'll know exactly what they're looking for. Can I add something there? This is Gina. Sure, sure Gina. I I think one of the things that should be a requirement too is that it is like within an hour or so of a major airport because I looked at um, some sites like in in Wyoming and they may or may not have worked but they were just too far from an airport it just wouldn't be convenient for our members so that's just all I wanted to add Thanks, Gina. Yeah, good suggestion. Um, okay, so we have come to the, um, the consensus to go ahead and wait a couple of months and do some more research, and then we'll have to, to make a decision then whether we go with Colorado or not. Hopefully, they wait for us and we don't lose the fight. But um, I think that uh, Laura said that we could wait a little bit. So. Um, Okay, so um, I think that's it for that. So hey, Liz, I guess, is, yeah, Liz, go ahead. This is Rachel, and that is one of the issues that people are maybe missing. By moving from year to year, from site to site, we easily can lose those dates. And so even, even Colorado or even Texas or possibly even Bakersfield. Any of those sites at any time may have someone come in on an off year when ASCA is not there, and then that that time zone is gone for us going forward. So, so timing is critical in terms of the site and their usage. That's all, thank you. Thanks. Okay. So um, the item that is here next will be to uh, discuss the results of the survey. And I think that actually we should do a, we, we should have a summary of the results and send them to the membership so that they know what we actually got. Um, so we should do that within the next few days. Um, but um, frankly, like I said, I was a little surprised that it didn't, it seemed to be so even um, in some of the uh, some of the categories. So, um, so um, I guess I'll go around to see if anybody has a specific comment or uh, something that that they saw on the survey. So, um, Rick. Uh, no, it was pretty 
straightforward, I thought. Uh, pretty typical. I mean, I, I get it. I understand that people want the Nationals in their area. I understand that. And I think the survey kind of reflected that view. But that's all I got. Okay. Rachel, anything else about the survey? No, because uh, as as Denise pointed out, uh, everyone would like to have it nearby, but very few people really understand what it takes to host it. That's all I have. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, Judy? I don't really have anything to add either. Thank you. Okay. Jean? Um, the only thing I would add is that, um, you know, I realize for our own personal reasons, we may only want to travel so far, and many people only like to drive with their dogs. They don't like to fly them, so that obviously can be a concern for people. But, you know, there's um, a whole bunch of other organizations out there that have their events in the same place every year. Um, most of the horse organizations and, uh, or even the NFR, you always know it's in Vegas and, and you just plan. That's, if you're going to go, you know when it is and you know where, you know, and you know where it is. Um, and, but I think we, you know, first need to look at costs, obviously. Well, not first need. We need to look at a facility that can check all the boxes, as we've all said. In a perfect world, everything would be undercover. And then in that respect, uh, ASCA would be able to control costs and get sponsorships and um, not, maybe not spend as much energy on nationals and finals as we do now. It would become more of a, you know, it, it would just become the way we do things. And that's all I have to add. Okay, thanks. Um, Jen? I, I don't have anything additional to add. Hey, Gina? Um, I agree with Jean that um, I think if you just hold it in one, maximum two locations, that people will just plan on it. I think as far as some of the statistics, as far as entries, I think people, a lot of times with the rotating sites will not go to one year's nationals knowing that they're going to go to a closer one next year. I think if it's just in one or two places, people will, you'll get a, actually an increase in number of entries. So that's all I have. Okay. Uh, Denise, anything to add? Oh, I don't think so. I think we've pretty well will looked at it. I know that my, my theory or my idea on the on the survey was you had two types of people. You had the people that are going to go to nationals and they as a group and they look at the site and then you have people that only are thinking about what their venue does and their own dog and how far it is from them. And and looking at the venue and knowing what the what the that the facility fits is the biggest concern. I'm not sure that everything has to be Sometimes even if a facility does not have the buildings and the cover, you can bring it to the facility. Um, you know, certainly in, in Bakersfield, you know, we could put money out to put, a, put a, a tent up to cover the agility rings. You know, so those are other things that you can look at at any facility to be able to do. Um, so I just think there's a little bit of flexibility, but you have to know that you can, the profit, uh, on the facility that you have to, the expense of the facility has to also be able to include something like that. But uh, it's just, you know, it's just something that we can try. And if we need to change it, we can do that. We're flexible, just whatever the membership needs to have. Thank you. Okay, thanks. I think, you know, if, if we decided to like try two sites or one site or something like that, um, you know, the only way to know what's going to happen is by actually doing it. Uh, we can try to predict, um, but it, that's not going to work very well. The only way we're going to know for sure 
how people are gonna you know react to it whether they're gonna come or not unfortunately is to actually do it and so i guess those are some of the decisions that we're just gonna have to be forced to make here um, pretty soon um so um i guess the next item is the review of set, uh, of a couple of the sites that have already been proposed and Cala put that in the information for both of them into the OneDrive. So um, I guess we're gonna we can start with the let's see uh, with the Equin Center at Granger. I, I, Grange, that's in Pennsylvania, correct? Um, yes, I've been researching that. And, yeah. Go uh, ahead, Jen. Uh, Calla, you didn't get that one thing I sent today that actually had some prices in it and cattle information um, in email? Uh, yeah, I thought I added it. Let me go take a look. Okay. Um, this looks, it is a totally equine facility. Um, if you look at the uh, picture, it shows the arena sizes in that diagram. And um, their outdoor surfaces and even their covered areas are going to be pretty limited for many of our indoor facilities. Uh, one of them is 70 by 300, um, and that area, if you look at the other uh, group, the it's to the far, let me see how this is orientated, it's at the far left bottom, and then if you look at the far right, there's buildings that are 50 by 120, and I had those dimensions in that other and I, um, I know that the ring size is 50 by 50 and 50 by 40, but there would be no way that people would be able to walk around that ring or these buildings would be one ring in each of those buildings. Um, she, I have called and called. Um, Lee has done a lot of work. He's researched livestock in the area and that's the one thing that's missing in the one drive um he's talked to sheep and cattle um it's there, there is now, no it's in okay <laughs> so i figure out how to refresh um so that will um uh, i believe this facility would be difficult for the amount of um, holding of livestock that we would have to do and when I started talking to her about where would she think we would hold this facility you know these this cattle you know most horse facilities I've dealt with they've had manure issues and she really hadn't thought about all the details of that that much many animals um, so I had told her again today that I needed numbers of what some of these buildings cost. Um, she kind of gave a figure of the 45K that Lee had in his um, little message. Um, so my personal belief looking at this is it is not, it will be beautiful for areas to run the dogs, probably could do tracking and the RVs, but the, it would be a major headache for setting up all the facilities to be uh, set for the livestock. Um, it was brought to me that they maybe they would set something up for future if we put them on the rotation, uh, but that would be a, also a big expense for ASCA. So I don't know, um, you know, how good of a working relationship this would be. Um, I must be missing something. I also spoke to Judy. It's within three hour driving distance for her. If it's something that the group wants to see. Um, I, I would like to have a stock person look at this facility that could really say that, yes, it could be set up. Um, 
you know, issues that we had in Tennessee where the livestock was getting out in the evening, you know, you think you have it set up. I, I assure you sheep will find every little place to sneak out. And when you have other people's livestock, we need to take care of it. So I think that's mine in a nutshell. Judy may have some additional information because she's from that area. And I'd be happy if she added anything to it. Um, and appreciate the amount of effort that Lee has put into giving us it and finding there was only one of the two dates that were originally available and um, are, is still available. Uh, but it sounds like this facility does book up as well. All right. And Liz, it's Judy. Go ahead, Judy. You know, like I said, I am more than happy to drive over there, take video, do whatever. But I'm not sure it's even worth going over because the buildings are not suitable for our other programs. And while, you know, stock is always something we have to keep in mind, um, and that's our biggest expense. If we have nowhere else to hold the other programs, it doesn't do us any good. You know, we have to be able to accommodate everybody. Um, most agility people just face that we'll be outside unless we're in Texas. We get it. We're not happy, but we'll do it. But we're not, I think if we try to put obedience and rally outside, we're going to have some pretty strong um, kickback from that. But again, I am more than willing to drive over there and take video for everybody if they'd like me to do that. Um, I I am of the you know of the opinion that obedience and rally need to be indoors. There's just no way, and um, and they also need to have all the rings in the same building. I mean, it's possible that some of the facilities we will have to divide. I don't know, but I, I think that they need to be under a roof. Um, I think it will be too difficult otherwise. Um, and, you know, regarding, you know, surfaces and stuff, we've already, you know, uh, had some misunderstandings uh, with uh, all the facilities about, you know, the cow manure and all that stuff and makes oh. uh, things more difficult for us because um, they don't I, understand. Wait, I, I have one more thing that I totally forgot. And okay, when you I'm said sorry. That, that's fine. Uh, and, and it is kind of important to the whole process is she has told me that the concreted buildings are only places that we could have banquets and meetings. No dogs could be in there. Now, she did wave on that, and I don't know how she feels about it. But most of those buildings I was talking about, and I believe all of them are on dirt or sand or some kind of surface like that. Yeah, not 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 on like a concrete concrete yeah. floor or anything like that. No. Hey Liz, Sorry. this is Rachel. Can I explain yes, to yes, everyone what we found out this weekend when we met with the Georgia Horse Park? <laughs> yes, please go ahead. <laughs> okay, guys, so uh, this, the horse park has known for almost two years now that we were going to have 160 head of cattle at the show. It's going, those cattle are going to be there for about nine days. It just occurred to them, just this, right before our meeting on Saturday, actually when they were meeting with Peter on Friday, that the cow manure was going to be an issue with the special footing that the horses must have in these arenas. And that there was no way that they could allow cows to be housed overnight in one of their horse arenas. So we were either going to have to move the cattle overnight to another arena or either move the entire cattle venue to another arena. And that's what we decided to do. And now the cows will be housed outside of the arena to ensure that the manure does not interfere with the footing for the horses. And this was uh, rather shocking to us because that was never brought up before. 
but that's been 15 years ago and a lot has changed since then. So true horse facilities must have perfect footing for the horses to be able to perform at their best and cow manure will not break down and so therefore that's why we had to move it. So when people suggest horse facilities, you must understand, and as the lady at the horse park told us, there's stiff competition between the facilities trying to keep their customers. And if and if anything happens to to damage that footing, their customers will go somewhere else. So we must also consider that if we are uh, suggested a horse facility. Okay, that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm not sure if anybody else wants to have some input on this one facility. This is Gina. Um, Hi, I don't Gina. think it. Oh, I don't think it would be worth our time to even pursue this particular facility any further, especially since the buildings aren't suitable. We also have to have. Um, room in the buildings that have rally and obedience for crating and uh, you know exhibitors to sit around the ring and that sort of thing and on a dirt you know it's on dirt I just don't think this facility will work at all thank you thanks Gina anybody else has anything to say about this one facility okay so let, let's go to the next one, which is in Tennessee. Um, I guess I, I'm just going to go around. Um, Rick? Uh, I, I really don't have anything to add to that. OK. Rachel, have you did looked anyone, at it? Uh, did anyone? Uh, do a site survey on this site because if you look at it it may be doable but you would not know that until you really dug down into it and did a site survey on it and I do know in that area of Tennessee there's probably readily available livestock because of the area because of the border collie people for the sheep and there's actually a lot of cattle growing up in that area so I, this would need to have a site survey done However, Tennessee, just like Pennsylvania, is still far from the middle of the country. So that concerns me. That's all I have. Thank you. OK. Uh, do you think that you could add this site to the ones that you're going to look at and maybe, you know? Sure. We'll, we'll add this site. Actually, I've already sent myself a note to look at this site because even yeah. though it is far from the middle of the country, you know, it it may be what we use. Yeah, okay, good. All right, um, all right. let's go to Judy. Anything to say about this site? Yes, if you look at the building sizes, once again, they're not suitable for anything. There isn't a building big enough to have any of the other programs in. I don't really even think we need to do a survey site. Um, you know, the buildings are 50 by 45. That's the size of a ring, let alone crating or spectators or anything. Um, you know, 60 by 30, 30 by 29. Um, they have livestock barns, but then again, they have an entertainment pavilion, which again is no sides. Um, they have some covered seating area, but again, they're not indoors. Um, there's a couple of other things, but it it and it doesn't mention the actual um, any arenas or what they have for livestock. So once again, whether we could do livestock or not becomes a non-issue if we can't fit in our other programs indoors. I mean, there's not a single building they list that would be big enough for um, obedience or rally or obedience. Or confirmation so that's my thing I mean I don't really even think we need to look at this and it's it may it's certainly not as far east as Pennsylvania but it's much closer to the middle of the country than a lot of other things it's not that far east of the Mississippi River so it's it's not bad um, 
location wise, but again, I don't think it's suitable at all. So that's my two cents. Okay. Um, Jean? I, I agree with Judy on the size of the buildings, but there there is mention of two arenas. Um, one's a 300 by 160, and it's covered with uh, bleachers and a stall barn, 99 stalls. And then there's another arena that's an open air that's 200 by 130. Um, and then they have what they call a covered shed area, Turner Turner Building. It says it's and it says it's 140 by 35 with a 12 foot tall ceiling. Uh, it says it's heated and it's got a concrete floor. Um, and then um, I saw. Oh shoot, where was it? Oh, the livestock barn, which has a bleacher and seating and a sawdust floor. That's only 50, 55 by 69. You know, that would be an arena that, well, you, you might be able to use for something. But um, overall, I don't think the buildings are going to work for us, unfortunately, because it sounds like a fabulous facility. Um, everything I was reading about it, and then also knowing that livestock is should be available in that area. Um, I don't know if it's worth uh, Rachel and her committee doing any more research on this or not. Thank you. All right, Jen. Um, I agree. Looking at the numbers, uh, there's only looks like maybe three buildings or arenas or covered areas that are usable, and we have more venues than that to do. Um, looking at the picture graph of it on the website, they look like riding arenas again. So we would have all the bringing in of all the equipment. So, um, and I guess they would have a thousand electrical and RVs. So that might be really nice, but uh, we'll leave it up to the group if they think there's enough there that's worth looking into uh, on size of buildings and areas. Thanks. Thank you. Um, Gina? Uh, yeah, I agree with um, Judy that I don't think we should even bother looking at this if it doesn't even check the basic boxes that we need. You know, the arena or the uh, buildings are just not going to be doable, so why continue on with it? You know, I looked at it online and it is gorgeous, but it's just not going to work for what we need. Thank you. Thank you, Denise. The same. If if it doesn't have what we need, then we just need to move on because it doesn't. We can't uh, can't change it. So I think we should just leave it and move on. Yeah, I I I hadn't looked at the sizes very closely until tonight, and I think you're right. These buildings are just not big enough. Um, not big enough for confirmation, not big enough for um, rally or an obedience either. Um, so I guess it's up to Rachel. She wants to spend time on it, on it but I don't think it's going to work. Liz, this is Rachel. No, it will not work because I just drilled yeah. down myself and looked at all the buildings. No, it, it cannot in any way take care of our needs. And as I already said, it is um, too far to the east for me. Thanks. We'll just delete this site. Okay. All right, so the I think those were the only sites that uh, we have been we have received. So um, the next item is a look at uh, requirements that each program or wish list for each program. Um, I'm hoping that everybody had a chance to look at them. Um, I think that pretty much the obedience and rally requirements could be taken care of if they have like their own building um, that is big enough, kind of like the way they have in Colorado or uh, areas like they have in Texas. Uh, 
but um, anyway, uh, I, we also have a lot of requirements that on the on the livestock. So I will go to go. I would like to go around and have you guys uh, comment on the requirements that were sent to us. Rick. Uh, you know, I feel like Rowling and the stock dog, they listed out all of the needs that they uh, felt like they needed to host the nationals. Uh, stock dog list is pretty extensive on everything down to stopwatches to water for the judges, for seats, from shade to, to everything, just number of stocks. So I think they both have done a real good and has given Laura and her committee a good focal point for looking for sites that can have the all the things that the committees are looking for. Right now, that's, you know, I feel like that we're giving that information to Laura and I'll be interested to see what they say and what they do with the information. Thank you. Thanks. Rachel? I, I would like to commend um, all the committees that took time to provide this. This information is critical going forward to ensure that uh, we clearly understand what each venue needs. I, I have nothing else. I just really do appreciate their time and effort to put this together for us. All right, Judy? Yeah, I'm the liaison to the Slacker Committee. Sorry, they haven't sent it yet. But, um, I, you know, it's these are all good lists, and it gives our national committee that's taking over a really good idea. I mean, agility is the same as stock. They even had it down to the coolers for the judges, things like that. So it's, um, you know, this is a really good, very simple list to go back to to see. Most of these requirements are listed in the rule books about what's required to host a show. So this makes it much easier so they don't have to look up every single rule book. So I, I'm glad and I will contribute mine as soon as I get it from the committee. Thanks, Judy. Jean? I, I just want to echo what everybody said about um, I'm very thankful that uh, the committees uh, provided these lists and put a lot of thought into them and I think they're pretty clear and easy to understand. Um, the only thing I want to say about the list of requirements that we as the board have gotten, um, there's the, I think one of the number one one, and this has nothing to do with committees, this has to do with us and our planning and, and what we are looking for. We say that it needs to be 10 days with two weekends involved you know, one at each end. And I realize that's how we've always thought about it. But we might be able to find a wonderful facility that maybe doesn't have two weekends for us. Maybe it's going to go from Wednesday to Wednesday. I don't know um, if that's something that we necessarily, I mean, obviously that could be the ideal, but we might want to think about um, the way we bracket our dates when we're looking at facilities and that's just a suggestion that i have thank you thanks jean jen um yeah i enjoyed all the details of this i know tracking had started on it and um, i hopefully i will have theirs available because their needs usually are not part of the venue itself but are also important and required um, and seeing all this breakdown, hopefully it'll help going forward to make sure that we have all the needs that uh, each of the venues need. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Gina? Um, I, too, would like to thank all the committees that responded and gave us this information. I would also, I think Rachel brought up an outstanding point that I had never thought of was and that should be added, maybe not necessarily to these lists, but to the list for the facilities is the dealing with the cattle manure. Um, I had never thought of that. And that is an excellent point and something that we do need to 
put on a list someplace. That's all I have. Thank you. Thanks. Denise? Well, if we're thinking about cattle manure, you know, we also have sheep and ducks. They all will do the same thing. So I don't know <laughs> if that, you know, by the time, by the time they're, they're out of that arena and they work it up um, down there in Bakersfield, those arenas are, you know, there's just not that much in there. The holding pens um, are a little bit different. I think they probably scrape those and put it in a dumpster, haul it off. But um, anyway, uh, as far as, as this, um, scheduling goes requirements for each program. I think they're doing very, I think these are great, great lists. Um, as far as the dates go that Jean brought up, which is a great idea, I don't really think that um, um, if it made a difference of being able to use a phenomenal facility if we went from Wednesday to Wednesday and only included one weekend, um, if there again, if people plan ahead, I don't think that that should make any difference. Um, I know in Bakersfield we did a little bit of different scheduling by putting the special dogs and bitches early in the morning and then having the intact dogs and bitches later in the afternoon and that eliminated one full day of judging. So we actually, if we, it was two pre-shows and the schedule as it was did not need the second weekend at all. We started with tracking Friday and we're finished with the nationals on, on the following Friday. So that that is something that you know scheduling can can play a part in how how long it has to take also. But I commend these committees because they've they've done a great job with this, um, really detailed. And that's what it takes. You know, when you get there, the little things like um, having a person that's dedicated to filling those ice chests up every day for your judges and your scribes and people at the ringside is something that's important. And so it's great to have these lists. Thanks so much. Okay, thank you. Uh, yes, uh, thank you to all the committees for uh, being so gracious and cooperate with us and spend the time in putting this list together. Um, all the ones that we have are pretty comprehensive. And so they will give us a good idea uh, of what we're gonna need going forward. Um, so I think that's that. I think we only have a couple of committees that have not sent them. And I think once we have them all yet, they should be sent to the advisory committee so that they have it. Um, and so that's it for the one topic. The next one is the financial information from past nationals. And um, that was also kind of interesting. Um, so I'm gonna go around, see what you guys have to say or whether you have any ideas or questions. So, um, Rick? I really don't have any ideas on this. I mean, we're strictly going on the information another individual has given us. Uh, you know, it's hard to predict if it's accurate or not. Uh, some sites seem to bring in a little bit more than others. So it's, I, I really don't have, uh, I don't know, I just don't have uh, anything to add to this. Okay, Rick. Rachel? Um, you know, the, the fact that there were folks that answered this question uh, is actually really good because I do not believe that, that the members really understand that when a local club or a consortium host a nationals and finals. Um, it is not, um, they do not have to divulge to ASCA the, the profit that they take in from these shows. The only requirement that ASCA has of those host clubs or those consortiums is to provide their accounting of finals in order for their payback to come back from ASCA. So I, I believe that that has been a misconception um, for a long time. So, um, you know, when you look, I, I believe that Rick is correct. It is according to the facility and the area of the country in which it's hosted, um, you know, whether 
the clubs or consortiums make a profit. So, I mean, that's all I have to add. I, I want to be clear in that so that people understand that the clubs that did provide this information were not forced to. Thank you. Thanks, Rachel. Judy? Um, in a lot of ways, I think this information is fairly irrelevant because, again, we're getting it. We're not getting an actual financial statement. We don't know the income. We don't know the actual expenses. It's kind of water under the bridge. It was what it was. We have no way of verifying it. But going forward, I do believe we need a financial statement process from our new national committee that's going to be running ASCA so that we can put out to ourselves and the membership exactly what everything costs, what we paid for everything, and then what the profit was for ASCA itself. I believe that's really integral to our, um, you know, us taking this over so that everybody knows what was spent, what was made. People may get, our membership may get a much better idea of what it takes to put on an event like this. So I, don't have much to say about the other stuff, but I do believe we need to do something going forward. This we should have a sheet that's filled out every single time we have nationals once we take it over. Thank you. Thanks, Judy. Good point. Um, Jean. Um, I agree with Judy. Um, you know, this information um, is not really relevant to our discussions. Um, and I also agree that we, since ASCA will be in charge, um, that our accounting processes should be much more detailed and, um, and then the membership, you know, and, and the rest of us will all kind of know where the money goes and how it works and everything. I mean, I'm sure that, uh, most members don't even realize that it's, hundreds of thousands of dollars just to put on this event um so uh and and i appreciate that uh these clubs were willing to give us these numbers but um like i said i don't i don't like judy said i don't think it really matters um for our discussions and what we're doing today but it's nice to have thank you thank you Dan? Um, yeah, it's great to have some of the summaries that they've provided. And uh, going forward, I think uh, we are going to have tighter restraints on all the accounting and how it's going to be taken care of. So we're going to know where things are being spent and where the income's coming and have a better idea how to run a nationals um uh, that's going to benefit all the OSCA members. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, Gina? Um, I have nothing additional to add. I just pretty much agree with what everybody's already said. OK, thanks. Denise? Um, I agree that, that uh, this is, you know, it's, it's over and done with. Um, the financial statements, I think that if a host club is doing it themselves, it's, I, can tell, I can tell you from experience that um, there's a lot of money that comes in from odd places and, and at odd times, that, and it makes it very hard to account for it because people hand you a glob of dollars and says, this is from this, so um, here you are. You know, and so you put a note with it and you stick it in a box and... And, uh, but for the most part, the accounting, the financial, as Judy was saying, that, you know, that's, that's what makes something um, so that you know how you're doing on it, if you're making it or not. And I, I wanted to say also that when ASCA takes over the nationals, the fact, and I, and I don't really like to use that word takes over because ASCA really didn't take anything away from the host clubs. The fact of the matter is that the host club stopped bidding for the nationals because it is such an, a huge thing to do. And a lot of clubs didn't know how to do it. They didn't have a facility to do it. They didn't have the expertise. 
the knowledge and the finances. It does take a couple hundred thousand dollars to put one on. And um, so, so it's a good thing that ASCA is, is, is working with this. And I'm, I'm sure that we'll have lots of people that help, help out that are ASCA members. But it was sort of like a necessary evil that, or not a necessary evil, but a necessary thing that, that ASCA did step up and volunteer itself to take over the hosting of the nationals because they're, they, we had basically run out of clubs that had put in for it. Used to bid for it. There were several clubs that bid every year. But in the last few years, um, you know, the ASCA office asked our club if we would host it because nobody else had stood up for it. So that's just um, how how I think about it. But I think that the financial part of it, like like Judy said, is is very necessary um, and to have a financial sheet set up ahead of time so that we know how all these expenses, we can look back on these on these things that we have from post clubs and we can see where some of that stuff came from and so it's probably good for experience. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, so that, the, so that the membership knows why we even requested this information, uh, this came actually because many members uh, questioned the fact that the board was not getting these numbers and that these numbers would supposedly would be critical in choosing um, the sites or if we ever decided to have only one site or two sites that this information should be used in that making that decision. And that's why we have requested that information from some of the consortiums going back to uh, back to 2011. Um, but in looking at the numbers, I don't think, like everybody else has said, I don't think they help us a heck of a lot because it all depends what happens that year. It all depends. Uh, some of the facilities are very expensive. Um, like Wisconsin became a very expensive facility. And so, you know, when you have expensive facilities, then you're going to have a dip in your, a drop on your, uh, on your profit. So um, anyway, um, that's why we have the information. And unfortunately, it's not helping us a heck of a lot, but uh, we wanted to, uh, make sure that the um, membership knows that we were trying to accommodate everybody's suggestions in requesting it, and we weren't we weren't sure how the numbers were going to come out. So um, anyway, that's all I have on that. Uh, so that was the last uh, item, and um, I think that uh, we came up with two things that we're going to wait on Colorado and see if we can find another facility. And we have uh, Rachel, Jan, and Denise who are going to uh, work together on this. And then also we will be sending out the results, a summary of the results of the survey to the membership so that the membership is aware of what we got. So I think that that's all. Uh, unless anybody else has any comments or questions. I do. It's Judy. Yeah, go ahead, Judy. I'm very sorry, y'all, that I missed the first part of the meeting, but um, I just wanted to say, I think whether we like it or not, we need to really think about putting it for the nationals for like th a three-year trial period, but three years in a row in Texas. Now, I am the last person that wants it in a single place. You have to realize that. But I think it is the only way we can give ourselves time to research other facilities, maybe more in the center of the country. We already know what we have in Brazos. It gives us a chance to try a single place for three years and see how it goes. I don't think we're ever going to know unless we try it. And really, it's the only way to stop all of this other stuff. We know everything is there. We can fit all our programs. We have the stock. So I just think it's something we all need to think about. That's my comment. Thanks. Thanks, Judy. Yeah, I think that some of us had come to more or less the same conclusion that we're not going to really know how it works to have it in one place 
or two places for that matter, until we try. It's the only way that we're going to know how the membership is going to react to it and how well attended they're going to be. So anyway. Liz, this is Rachel. Go ahead, so, Rachel. Right. So, I mean, while we can go back and try to research these sites, we're going to need to make a decision fairly soon on how we're going to move forward. And one of the um, issues remains this, this must be cost efficient for ASCA because um, the goal in ASCA hosting, other than the fact it is the ASCA Nationals and I have thought for a very long time that it should be ASCA show, but one of the goals is to help defray the cost of finals uh, for all the dogs that work so hard during finals and to potentially help ASCO with the building of a new business office. So we must make this cost efficient for ASCO as well as making it a, a state-of-the-art show for our members. So we're going to need to make a decision pretty soon on this one way or the other. Thank you. Yes, I agree. We, we can't just wait around and keep waiting. It's just going to make things more difficult for us. Um, so I think that uh, maybe we should at some point, I, I guess we'll do it through email, um, go ahead and schedule another meeting for, to discuss this that is not our regular teleconference. Um, and by then maybe uh, Rachel will have some information on some of the sites and we can at least make a decision on uh, on at least make a decision on 2022. Uh, that will be like the least uh, that um, we can get away with here in the next few months. I mean, it, it just needs to be done. So anyway, I think this is all. And so I will ask for a motion to adjourn. I move to adjourn this meeting, Denise. Thank you. And I'm sure that everybody says yeah, right? Yep, second it. Yeah. All yeah. right. Yeah, Thank you night. for everybody. Thanks for everybody. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night.